All right, so we're going to do some reading slash listening practice. Um, this is an article that's called Walking Tall. It comes from ReadWorks, and it is about Ruby Bridges. I'm going to read it out loud, and you can follow along with what's on the slides. So again, the title of this article is Walking Tall. How did Ruby Bridges make history 50 years ago? Don't be afraid. That's what Ruby Bridges' mother told her on November 4th, 1960. Little Ruby listened carefully to the advice. Soon, four United States federal court marshals, or officers, arrived at the Bridges family home in New Orleans, Louisiana, to drive the first grader to William France Public School. A screaming mob was waiting. People stood near the building, shouting. Ruby had a, held her head high. With the marshals surrounding her, the six-year-old walked into the school and into history books. That morning, Ruby became one of the first African Americans to attend an all-white elementary school in the South. And in the photo, you can see Ruby Bridges being led into her school. The section is called Dividing Lines. For a long time, parts of the United States were segregated or separated by race. Under law, black children could not attend the same public schools as white children. People of different races also had to use separate public restrooms and drinking fountains. U.S. leaders worked hard to end segregation. They wanted all Americans to have civil rights. Civil rights are the rights to be treated equally. In 1954, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that segregation in public schools was unconstitutional. The case was Brown versus the Board of Education. By the year 1960, however, many Southern cities, including New Orleans, were still not following the court's ruling. That prompted a federal court to take action in New Orleans. It ordered the city to desegregate its public schools. Ruby Bridges was one of the first students to lead the way. The section's called School Days. Ruby made it inside William France Public School that first day. However, there was so much uproar that she didn't make it to class. From the principal's office, Ruby watched as angry parents pulled their children out of school. On her second day, Ruby met her teacher, Barbara Henry. By then, so many kids had been removed from the school that Ruby was Henry's only student. The pair worked one-on-one -on -one for the whole year. Mrs. Henry was one of the nicest teachers I ever had, Bridges told WR News. She made school fun for me. And then below is a photo of Ruby Bridges with her teacher, Mrs. Henry. Um, this is them being reunited later in life. So I think this was in the late 1990s. Outside the building, people continued to protest. Others, though, believed everyone should have civil rights. By the end of the year, crowds began to dwindle or decrease. When Ruby entered to, I'm sorry, when Ruby returned to school for second grade, there were no more protesters. Many of the other students had returned. And this section is called Building Bridges. By the late 1960s, most schools in the United States were no longer segregated, thanks to the efforts of civil rights workers. Other laws were passed that improved life for African Americans. The Civil Rights Act of 1964, for example, helped protect African Americans' rights to seek jobs. Bridges, had, <laughs> Bridges never had to attend a segregated school. She graduated from high school and continued her studies in business school. Today, Bridges speaks to kids about the importance of treating one another equally. She has never forgotten her experience at William France Public School, and she shares details about her first day there in her speeches. I wasn't really afraid, Bridges told WR News. I didn't really know what was going on at the time, and I loved school. And this section is called the Little Rock Nine. Before Ruby Bridges, there was the Little Rock Nine. There were nine African-American students in Little Rock, Arkansas. On September 4th, 1957, the students attempted to begin classes at the all-white Central High School, but the governor of Arkansas and the angry mob surrounding the school prevented them from entering. Finally, President Dwight D. Eisenhower took action. He sent U.S. troops to protect the students, and they finally began classes. High school was far from easy for the group, but some of them went on to graduate. In 1999, Congress awarded the Little Rock Nine the Congressional Gold Medal for their bravery. This section is How Ruby Made History. How does it feel to make history? WR News student reporter Kaylin Ray recently asked Ruby Bridges, 
How does it feel to know you are part of US history? I'm very proud of that fact. My mother was really happy about my being able to attend that school. My father was more concerned about my safety. What was your first day at William France Public School like? My first day I spent sitting in the principal's office, so it was very confusing. What was it like to meet your teacher, Mrs. Henry, again many years later? I was really, really excited about meeting her again because she was a very important part of my life that had been missing for a long time. 